Hey everybody, this is Rich and this is Beekeeping with Rich. Uh, when I gave a seminar here a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't really thinking about the cabinet behind me, it's just something that's here, but everybody in the class was like, ooh, ah, and taking pictures. So, what the heck, I figure I might as well do a video on it for you. This is a little Craftsman tool cabinet. It's meant for shovels and rakes and other long-handled tools or you can alternately buy shelves and put in it. They don't come with shelves. I didn't want shelves, so that's fine with me. Uh, I'm gonna show you the way this is set up. This allows me to have things I might just suddenly need when I'm out in the bee yard. If I suddenly decide that I need to put a shim on or change something up, slide a uh, uh, queen excluder in some place or whatever, I don't have to go running around. I keep everything right here. That's the beauty of being a backyard beekeeper. You know, I have three hives and they're my babies. So here's my baby's room. <laughs> oh, my wife just pointed out to me that I should probably point out that there's always a swarm trap on top of this thing and a swarm trap on top of another cabinet just like this that does actually have all my shovels and rakes in it because that gives a good height. For it. So feast your eyes on the cabinet of wonders. <laughs> what I did here, the important thing is that if you're careful, you can get three stacks. You know, bee equipment's 20 inches, regardless of whether you're an 8 or 10 frame beekeeper. Bee equipment is all 20 inches. I have a, a rack on the bottom to keep it off the bottom in case there's ever moisture down there. Then, I guess I should take these out. If you would come in, sweetheart. Oh, there we go. How about that? So this is a Craftsman 22 <laughs> cubic foot <laughs> vertical shed. You want to get in close on the serial number? It has glare. CMX R S S C. 2050. Unexpected, but all right. Uh, you don't need a shelf. A shelf can be awkward and also could retain water if there was ever a leak. If you look, this is all just a one by two set vertically, and everything just slides in and leans against the back of the shed, and everything stays in place just fine. These one by twos are set using a standard right angle L. It is set in to come from underneath and up and has two bolts that uh, go through to the outside with uh, a fender washer on them since this is just plastic after all. So a big fender washer, that's all that holds these and they fit perfectly inside the cutouts that are designed for the shelving unit which can be purchased as an add-on accessory here but those shelving units you're not going to buy them for here because they'd be too fat and they're not positioned to go in the right places but this works just fine so if you'll see all the standard inner covers are labeled standard inner cover all the screened inner covers are labeled screened inner cover. Whatever their make or manufacture, they all fit. One of the most useful things you'll find in beekeeping, in my opinion, is the Amiri shim. If you don't want to cut holes in your uh, honey supers, but you want an upper entrance, an Amiri shim can provide you with that. Not my favorite use for them because there is a gap there and the bees might be slow to go through the gap. I'd rather have everything nice and tight, but I find all kinds of uses for the Mary Shim. Maybe I'm putting an empty super on top of something and I need it to just be a little bit thicker. Boom, and a Mary Shim gives me another three quarters of an inch. That works real well with the feeders, for instance. Uh, sugar feeders. A sugar shim, it's nothing more than a piece of half inch hardware cloth on a one by two, I actually go ahead and cut a piece of uh, yardstick 
and put it on the underside so there is a little gap there. What you do with these is you just lay a piece of newspaper on it, dampen it with water, dump dry sugar on it, or you can put a pollen patty on it and stack it into your stack under your inner cover. It gives the bees a place to feed. I don't use them much anymore since I started using the uh, deeper type shim and the uh, uh, rapid feeders. But And that's a prior video. That's a prior video. Uh, but I don't get rid of these because while I have three hives most of the time, in the spring I could have six, seven, eight hives because I need to do my splits in order to prevent swarming and then I give away the splits to other members of the club or whoever needs bees. That is, every spring it's who needs bees, who needs bees. Over here we have, I prefer inner covers, or I'm sorry, I prefer queen excluders with a frame. Do I use the queen excluders all the time for queen excluders? No, sometimes I just use them uh, to support a feeder just like those can be used for. You can't very well do that if you're just using one that isn't, but the thing is it doesn't give them a whole lot of room, but you know what? Push come to shove and you're running out of equipment. Things can be used all different ways. All the stuff on the sides, yep. Entrance reducers, stack of them, both for uh, nukes and the eight frame. I don't do anything 10 frame. There's queen includers, I guess you would call them. If you're afraid that there's about to be a swarm, you could slap one of these across the front of your hive if the queen can't get out. However, if they've slimmed her down enough, she can get out. So those aren't terribly useful. Over here is where the uh, ultimate robbing screens are kept when they're not in use out there. And rather than trying to keep safety pins there, I simply took a piece of foam and attach it here and I just stick my uh, push pins in the foam. That way I always have them if I need it and I stick them far enough apart so I can grab them with a gloved hand. But while we're on that topic, you notice there is a magnetic bar crossways across there to hold things like knives and these pliers because if I have gloved hands on and I need to force one of these in and it's not going, boom, that's what the pliers are there for. If I need to clean an IPM board, that's what that's for. Extra hive tools, uh, large serrated knife in case I need to adjust some honeycomb because I'm a foundationless beekeeper. Sometimes they go wonky with the comb. Sometimes you have to come in Slice a little bit, bend it back where you need it, and attach it back on. Extra queen clips in case they're needed. Some extra front entrances for honey supers. A level. Of course you need a level because you want to make sure all your hives are level. And so if I'm messing around with something out here, instead of running into my garage, I just keep a level handy out here. Shims. Particularly here in South Florida, we like all of our beehives to be, after we level everything out all so carefully, we like everything to be tipped up. Actually for that, I use these plastic shims. Down here, because they're long lasting and easier to use in that purpose. These, I use if I need a quick and dirty upper entrance or I need some ventilation for the bees because you can slide this in the whole length of the side of your super and it just gives you a little gap for extra ventilation and they usually find that that's plenty for them to use as an upper entrance. I would, uh, if I were in another area, I would definitely be using these if there was any chance of flooding. But if my bees flood out, we have bigger problems. We've got bigger problems. <laughs> yeah, because they're in the backyard. <laughs> Of course, there's where the bee brushes are. Hardly ever get touched anymore because, refer to my earlier video, I much prefer a turkey feather for all that sort of thing. 
Oh, this is something interesting you might like. There is, this is nothing more than glue holding these little strips on here. And what are these for? Well, when I'm, if I'm going to use the beetle traps between the bars, I can put the beetle traps in here. These are spaced so that you can just set the beetle traps in them. I use diatomaceous earth rather than oil. These were made originally when I was using oil, but still diatomaceous earth. That keeps everything nice and level. I can just do these and run down this assembly line and drop the uh, uh, beetle traps in between the frames. And this keeps me from uh, spilling anything, messing anything up. Always keep a marker handy. You never know when you're gonna need to mark something out here. Now, this is important, and it's about time to change it. Toe of a sock, what's in it? Nap the balls. It makes sure that moths and bugs and things stay out of here for the most part, because when the door's closed, you get you know, a very slight smell of naphtha in there. And by naphtha, I do mean the bee-friendly type, not the unbee-friendly type. Now, this is uh, something not everybody uses. I just use a good heavy piece of wood, oak or whatever, a lot of times. And if I need a temporary reduced entrance, I just set one of these in front and move it however much I need to move it for whatever size entrance I want. Uh, not this long one, but when the in the spring when those uh, robbing screens are not on the hives, this size right here is what would be in place of the robbing screen and that will give me a B entrance about that wide over to the end. Did the doors come with those hanging things on them? No, I had to actually go on eBay and find those or Amazon. I think I got these on Amazon. Uh, I went looking for these because I saw them actually in my doctor's office. They were using them for charts and things and I went, that's what I want to put on the doors. And I had to hunt around for them some, but eventually I found a set of them. And the hooks? Uh, the hooks are cheap dollar store things. I'm gonna put that back in there right now. Um, the hooks are three for a dollar at the dollar store. And you know, they're useful for odds and ends. Here's some upper entrances on a wire. That hangs there. Do you need to plug an entrance real quick? Well, I use three quarter inch holes, so a three quarter inch cork works for that purpose. Try to make everything integrate. What's this rag up here for? Well, it's actually a piece of canvas from an old tent and it can be thrown over uh, a uh, the one half of the beehive when it's not in use. But most of the time I don't bother. I keep a good supply of signs on hand uh, Corbon is what the stuff's actually called, but we just uh, call them snipe signs or political signs. Trim to size. It's like I need to open the whole hive, but I don't need the whole hive looking up at me all the time. So I just snatch one of those and set it on half of the hive while I work the other half. Or grab two of them and set it in three quarters of it, whatever. Do I want to introduce two uh, bee colonies to each other so I can merge them? Nothing but a quarter inch piece of plywood, piece of quarter inch, or sorry, eighth inch uh, wire on either side. So it's as far apart so they can't actually touch each other with their tongues. But you do that and put it on there for two or three days, then you're good. PVC shims, because I happen to have a chunk of PVC I picked up one day. Nothing else to do with it. Fume boards and bee escapes. Notice this style of bee escape. Personally, I much prefer it to this type, because here in South Florida, even right now, I was comparing notes with other club members last night. We've all got, we still now have drones in our colonies. We have drones in our colonies pretty much 12 months out of the year. 
And if I'm trying to clear a colony, or if I'm trying to clear a super uh, of bees, and I'm using one of these, it gets clogged with drones. And you have to wait until they dry and desiccate, break them up and clean them out and everything else. This type, you loosen two screws, index it, lift it up, you clean it out. But I also don't find that I have a lot of trouble with drones getting caught in this one. Now, this is a South Florida problem. I realize drones year round, but it is what it is. But I much prefer this style. And then you simply put it on your own board. You know, you don't buy the you don't buy the board with this on it, but you can get this at Man Lake, probably the Don as well. I keep the fume board next to it since that goes with that. I'll show you some more things some other time. My wife's telling me the video is getting a little too long. So have a great day beekeeping, and I'll see y'all next time.